Let's work out our creative muscles and brainstorm 10 new game ideas in 10 minutes. I'll roll two of these dice that have different icons on them. These are Rory Story Cubes from Game Right Games and I'll link to them in the description of the video. They're like $13. After rolling dice, I'll set a timer for one minute and see what new game idea I can come up with based on what I rolled. If you want to play along, just pause after I roll the dice and see what new idea you can generate in one minute. Yes, just one minute. We are speed running this baby. So I will be coming up with new board game ideas, but video game designers can also do this exercise to come up with new video game ideas as well. All right, ready? Let's go. A parachute and a tall tower. All right, ready? One minute. Let's go. Oh boy. Okay. I feel like most people will come up with I with this same general idea, but you only have a minute. So here's here's what I got. This would be like a push your luck game. And so you're trying to safely parachute off the different levels of this tower, getting higher and higher and higher. And whoever successfully jumps off and parachutes safely down the top level of the high tower wins. I think this would be like a deck building game. So everyone would start with their basic parachuting cards and you know, they're just learning. And so they won't have the greatest cards and the chance of being successful is not very high. They have to build up their deck so that they become, they get a better and better parachute. Maybe it's like people like making their own homemade parachutes and they're trying to make them good enough that they can safely parachute down this tower. And let's imagine that there's a trampoline or a big mattress at the bottom of this tower so no one's getting hurt. You would have to start with your basic deck and there would probably be like an open market and somehow you would try to get better pieces for your parachute or maybe just better parachutes. I'm not 100% sure, but you would need to get better, build up your parachute deck and then when you're ready, you would jump off the first floor. And so if you jump off the first floor, you would turn over one card. And if it's a successful jump, then you would move on to level two. And maybe level two, you're turning over two cards. And then you move up to level three, then you would be turning over three cards. But then if you turn over, uh, there's a rip in your parachute or something breaks or whatever, and you don't have a successful jump, then it would move down a level. And then it would be first to the 10th floor, laying out 10 cards in a row, successful jump to the 10th floor. That's what I got. That's our first one. We're just getting warmed up. Feel like most people would probably do something similar. So I'd be interested to know if you came up with something different. So I'm gonna challenge myself for the next ones to really try and not think of the most obvious answer, but it really is tough in only 60 seconds. But let's move on to round two. We have a magnet and a rainbow. Here we go. Okay, <clears throat> this is a bit of a weird one. So there would be a board in the middle of the table that would be elevated by a few inches, like probably a good like five inches or, or six. Everyone would have a magnet and the magnet would be a different color of the rainbow. So that's your color and you're trying to get your color of the rainbow into the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There would be metal pieces, and so you, everyone puts their magnet stick under the game board, and you're trying to move your color either in place in the rainbow, so then that would be cooperative, wouldn't it be, if like everyone's trying to get the pieces of the rainbow in a certain amount of time, which could be fun, or, you're trying to get your color into the pot at the end. First to get their seven of their pieces of the rainbow into the pot at the end of the rainbow wins. Or if it's cooperative, you need to rebuild the rainbow in a minute. That's what I got for that one. Well, let's move on to the next one. Here we go. Two down. We have a B and a magnifying glass. Let's go. This one might not be a winner. I just kept thinking about apiary. It's a new game that just came out about bees. And I was just thinking apiary, apiary, apiary. So this is what I got. You're a bunch of bees and all the flowers that you want to pollinate have been shrunk down. I'm imagining this magnifying glass is symbolizing like something microscopic or something small. And so the flowers are hard to get to to pollinate. And so you are trying to enlarge the flowers so that you can get to them much easier. And so I don't know how that would work, but 
you are trying to make the flowers more accessible by making them by having them grow and be bigger but if you are able to make a flower bigger other bees can go there but if you were the one who made it grow then they have to pay you something to go and pollinate that flower and maybe the goal is whoever can pollinate a certain number of flowers or like maybe you get pollen tokens by visiting different flowers and maybe you need to visit different kinds of flowers maybe there's some set collection in there uh this is a weird one um i struggled a little bit with the magnifying glass i was just like maybe you have a game where you're like looking really close to the different parts of a bee maybe like the bee is is enlarged and it's like you're looking at different parts of the bee this was a tough one did you come up with something better than that i hope you did please let me know in the comments let's move on here we go a house and a fountain. Here we go. So this game would be a bag builder. So each person would have a different house card in front of them and a fountain bag. So the fountain at your house would be represented by the bag in front of it and they would all be different colors. So each player would have a different colored bag or a different colored fountain. And so these are wishing wells, not just fountains, they're also wishing wells. And so players will have to throw in something into a different fountain. So it could be money, it could be garbage, it could be other random treasures. People can throw whatever they want. Maybe on your turn you can choose to toss something into someone else's bag or you can go take something out of a fountain. Maybe you're trying to collect specific things or maybe you are trying to get the most money. Maybe it's just money. So maybe it's just money and garbage are the two things that you could draw from a fountain bag. Everyone starts with a certain number of gold and garbage. And you can decide what distribution you want to put into your bag at the start. And you have to put like half of it into your bag. It could be all money or it could be all garbage. It could be half and half, it could be whatever. So you put half of it in your, secretly put half of it into your fountain bag to start. So then maybe you people are secretly putting other things in other people's bags, but you don't know what they're putting in. Then on your turn, you can go around and you have to draw from someone else's bag. You can't draw from your own bag. So I don't know why you would ever put gold in your bag. You would probably maybe put gold in your bag because you want some want people to draw from your bag and leave gold in the other bags for you. I don't know. I mean, I only thought about it for 60 seconds, but that is what I got. It is a bag builder game based on wishing wells in a rich neighborhood. Moving on. Do you think we should roll three? Let's try. A fish, an abacus, and a sheep. Let's go. So the abacus is really just, you know, a calculator, right? It's just a, a way to count things or add things up. And so I took that as each player has their own farm and they have a section for fish and a section for sheep and a section for cows and horses and pigs. And then at the start of the game, each player is randomly given a number for each section of their farm. So this player needs to have 10 fish this player needs to have eight fish this player needs to have whatever so and then the different sections would have different numbers so maybe i would need to have 10 fish but six sheep and seven cows and five horses and three pigs but the thing is when i take something from the supply like say i'll take two fish take two fish but then there's a condition in each section and that would also change you know be variable that when every time you add something it either adds or subtract subtracts from one of the other sections on your player board so it'd be like each time you add one fish take away one sheep or add one sheep or each time you add a cow add two horses it was more like a, of a math problem but you know you have the abacus and that's what's uh, prompting us this is kind of cool this, uh, this is my favorite one so far so you could take any two animals Put them in your farm but then that triggers an effect depending on which zone you put it in and you're trying to get the exact number that you need for each zone and the first player to do that wins <sighs> i like that one and that was with the three dice i thought the three dice would be way harder but i think i got a good roll too let's try three dice again you ready a star an id and a lightning bolt here we go
I'm not sure about this one. So the ID card I took as you work somewhere where you observe shooting stars and lightning. That could be like an observatory, like a research outpost on the North, North Pole or something. I don't know. You're all scientists at this research facility and um, different things will happen at night in the sky and so different cards will be turned over like different events and there won't be any names for the different events happening in the sky you're just looking at them and depending on some sort of way to learn about the sky you would then have to try to identify and name the different events like the different cards so the different cards will have different names like oh, that particular comet is this name, that shooting star has this name, that planet had this name, that constellation has this name, whatever. And they could all be like made up things in this random world that we've created. I don't know how that would work exactly, you gathering knowledge, but if you have the card that matches one of the events that comes up that has the name, you can successfully identify what that event was and then you would get a point for identifying that. And whoever can correctly identify the most things wins. There we go. Let's continue with three. Okay, I think it's a speech bubble, a beetle, and a flashlight. Ready? Here we go. So what I came up with, the flashlight made me think that this game is happening in the dark. So then that made me think of like a haunted house. So maybe you're in a haunted house and there's all, everything in there is haunted, including the bugs. So the house has a whole bunch of face down cards. And so there are all these scary things that are gonna jump out at you as, you as you're exploring this house with your flashlight. Any player will turn over a card and that is symbolizing shining a flashlight at, in that section of the house. So you turn over the card to reveal what scary thing is there. And let's say it's a beetle. Maybe it's like a bunch of creepy beetles crawling everywhere. And so the first player who says the specific thing you need to say to remove the curse of that specific cursed item, maybe everyone has like a little book, like a little ghost hunter's book, or maybe they're like a ghost hunter's manual that tells you what you need to say to get rid of certain haunted things. So whoever says the right thing when a specific card is turned over gets that card because they rid the haunted house of that thing by saying the right, what word am I looking for here? The right incantation to break the spell, to break the curse of that card. Whoever has the most cards once the whole house has been cleared of haunted things wins. Let's move on. <laughs> Are you having fun? I am. Here we go. Okay, I rolled a sheep. I'm gonna roll that again because we already had a sheep. A lock, a key, and a cell phone. Here we go. This one I was really excited about because the lock and the key just made me think of an escape game and I love escape games. And so I was like, this will be so easy. Then I saw the cell phone, but then a couple other games that already exist kept coming into my mind. So my first idea was, you know, having an escape game, like a classic escape game, and you need to be able to call for help before an hour is up. But that game already exists. I can't remember what, what game it is, but it already exists. Anyway, the other idea I had was trying to solve some sort of mystery or some, again, again, an escape room sort of thing, but by like texting each other. And there's already a game that exists that does that. Alice is missing. Someone in the comments like, told me about the game and I had heard about it before where it's like an, a role-playing game where you're trying to solve a mystery but the whole game is played just with texting each other the people at the table so here's what I came up with so it would be an escape game you would be texting and calling different phone numbers that you would find in this escape game and they would all go to pre-recorded messages or like auto responses so it feels like you're actually texting someone or you're actually calling someone and you would get a bunch of different information. That could be kind of cool. I don't know, I don't think that exists already. It could, very well could. I know I've done games where like, you know, you'll call one number and you get like a pre-recorded thing, but this would be like the whole game would be about call, like finding different numbers and calling different people and then calling them back. And like, it would be like a whole world that you'd be getting into by for calling and texting different characters, but it all just be auto responses responding to you depending on the first time or second time that you've messaged them. That's what I came up with for that. I'm happy with that. 
Let's move on. All right, so we have a bridge, a bunch of arrows, and someone sleeping. Ready? Here we go. This was a tough one because the first 30 seconds I was thinking one idea and then I shifted the last 30 seconds to a completely different idea. So it is what it is. So the idea would be you're in this mythical fantasy land where there's a whole bunch of bridges and a whole bunch of trolls under the bridges everywhere. And the trolls are all sleeping. So a sleeping troll under a bridge in every direction. So you're trying to successfully move over as many bridges as possible without waking up the trolls. Every time you cross over a bridge, you have to roll a die. And if you roll the troll, the troll wakes up and something bad happens. But if you roll the die and the troll does not wake up, you just are able to pass. And so you're trying to get to different places to get treasure, um, to get better dice to roll as you cross the different bridges. It's like you need to cross the bridges to get to the different things to build up your stealth to cross the bridges without waking up the trolls. I don't, I don't know, this is a 30 second idea, okay? <laughs> I mean, there's something there, but I think if I, had the, if I had thought of this right from the get-go, I could have had a full minute to think it through. But basically, you're just trying to cross as many bridges as possible without waking up trolls to get cool stuff and you're building up your points and your treasure. Okay, one more. All right, here's our last one, rolling three. Here we go. We have a wand, an alien, and like theater masks. Last one. Here we go. I have to tell you, I could not come up with a coherent idea for that one. There was just too much going on. Magic, aliens, and theater. The best I could come up with was you're aliens with magical powers, but you're deciding to use those powers to <laughs> pursue theater in your acting career. It was not good. Um, so let me know if you came up with something for that. That was, a, that was a fun role. There was a lot to work with there, but I could not come up with something. So I'm re-rolling for our last one. I want to I wanna end on a good one. So far, the um, counting animals one is my favorite. So I want... I want to try to do something better than that. Here we go. Fire apple tree. Here we go. So my first thought was, you know, it could be a game where a fire is encroaching on your apple tree farm and you're trying to save as many apples as possible and stop the fire and it could be like a cooperative thing but then i decided to change gears just because i felt like that was like maybe a bit obvious and so i ch decided to change gears to it's still an apple tree farm but everyone is different farm like competing farmers and you are trying to gather apples and then build a fire to cook the apples into pies and different treats and things and then sell those things in the market. But then, you know, bad things can happen where crows can steal your apples. Maybe some apples will turn rotten, like bad things will happen. So you're trying to time, you know, what you do on your turn to optimize it. So will I gather? Will I cook? Will I prepare? Will I sell? And also the townsfolk will have different things that they're in the mood for. You know, like apple pies are really popular right now. So if you were to make an apple pie, but you need to have a certain number of apples and a big enough fire to make that, then you can craft an apple pie, sell it in the market to get more money. So there would probably be like some sort of like a tile area showing what apple products are popular in the town at that moment and then they would always be like sliding down so different things would become popular in and out of popularity so you're trying to time you know what you're going to make with your apples to try and get the most money from the market i'm all right with that one especially because that was another one where i shifted the idea halfway through the minute so whew. all right well we did it we just came up with 10 new game ideas in 10 minutes if you played along, please share any of your ideas that you came up with in the comments.
and let me know if you end up prototyping or playtesting any of them. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider liking and subscribing. You can also join my membership program by clicking on the join button below. I'll be playtesting two of my new games with members tomorrow and I'll then playtest their games as well. I also run a monthly members only live stream. I chat with members on Discord and the members only channels. And there are a bunch of other perks of being a member, including getting a shout out at the end of my videos like this. Thank you to my awesome members Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. I hope you had fun. Be sure to follow me on social media at Pamwell's Game Design, and I'll see you in the next video.